Uh, my name is Jorge Marin, and I'm going to talk about Golang and WebAssembly, a quick introduction. Um, so, oh, hidden slide. Welcome to GoFacon, and thank you for coming to my talk. Um, are you enjoying yourself today? Yeah? yeah? <laughs> Amazing. <sighs> breathe. <laughs> Double breathe. OK, this is my first time doing a, a talk in a conference, so please <laughs> bear with me. Um, thank you, thank you. So a quick about me, uh, my name is Jorge, I'm an engineer. I work on autonomous indoor navigations uh, for UABs, which stands for unmanned area vehicles, basically drones. And then got back to the cloud space, and after three years working at a startup called Vietnam that was recently acquired by VMware, uh, I started working at Dyson. So here you have my personal web page and my Twitter handle. Um, first, a quick disclaimer, I'm not expert on this. I might incur inaccuracies, uh, but I'll try my best to describe the technologies. Uh, and this is a high-level high talk. Uh, I'm, this is basically an introduction, and more details can be found in the resources, which I'll, say, I'll share later. And not a fancy presentation, because anybody got time for that. So, poll time, like every, every good talk. Um, raise your hands if you know what Golang is. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> so I'm th in the right conference. Um, know what JIT or AOT means? Right, so basically uh, JIT stands for uh, just in time and AOT uh, ahead of time, and this refers to the compilation of code. Um, and you're going to see later how this relates to WebAssembly and Golang. Um, know what I ASM means? Yeah, mostly everyone. ASM is a, a a short shortcut for assembly, and it's um, the mm, closer way to write a uh, code uh, that executes on a machine. Uh, that's not machine code. Um, now, what GCC or LLVM is? All oh, more people. Good. Uh, so I'm not gonna. Uh, we're gonna see that later. Um, ASM.js, M script pen, script, M script ten. Right, so basically, ASM.js is a subset of JavaScript and is designed to allow computer software uh, written in languages, in high level languages like C or C, uh, to, be run in, to be run as web applications, uh, for example, in the browser, uh, while maintaining the performance that you have with all those uh, pre compiled languages. And the performance improvement on it is uh, limiting the language features of JavaScript to those that can uh, be optimized during ahead of time compilation and other performance improvement. That ASM.js and mscript10 script is basically a toolchain for compiling to ASM.js or uh, WebAssembly, the tool to, to compile that code to, to that. Um, know what WASM is? WASM? Oh, pretty good. Uh, so, know what WebAssembly is? Right, so uh, WASM is a shorthand for WebAssembly. Uh, basically, it's Web ASM, so WebAssembly. Good. Preferred beans to Mac? <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> That's all right. Um, why? Um, what I'm going to try and, and answer in this talk is what if WASM? Uh, why WASM if we have JavaScript? Uh, why WASM if we have ASM.js? Um, if WebAssembly faster than JavaScript? Who knows? Uh, how can I run Golang code in the browser? That's the most important one. Um, is WebAssembly trying to replace JavaScript? Mm -hmm. um, when, could Go <laughs> when could Golang compile to WebAssembly be useful for anybody? Right. So, um, what is WebAssembly? WebAssembly uh, is a new type of code uh, that runs in modern browsers, web browser. It's a low-level assembly-like language, so uh, you are not meant to write in WebAssembly, and it has a compact binary format that can run in your computer, in your browser, with near-native performance, and provides uh, you a way of compiling those high-level languages like C or C++, C++ or Golang uh, to turn that into, a, into this binary format closer to machine code that can be executed in our browsers. 
Um, so WebAssembly is designed to complement and run along JavaScript. Uh, so no, it's not trying to replace JavaScript. Um, and WebAssembly actually uses some uh, uh, JavaScript APIs to interface with it, and they both should uh, talk to each other, and, and they share some functionality. Um, and yeah, WebAssembly is being developed as a web standard uh, by the uh, World Wide Web Consortium uh, WebAssembly Working Group. And it's uh, in active development by, um, by a lot of developers from big companies like Mozilla, Microsoft, Google, Apple, Apple among others. Um, right, so WASM allows uh, engineers to write the code in these high level uh, languages like Golang, and, and then you get all the performance gains and reliability and predictability uh, when targeting those browsers without knowing what browser is the code going to be executed on. And as WebAssembly is meant to, to be run inside the browser, it's still uh, subject to the browser restrictions like a sandbox environment, uh, the same origin and permission policies, and it won't have access to files in the disk. Um, WASM is not a JavaScript killer, again, and WASM is not a new programming language. Well, you could write in WASM, as I said, but uh, it's not meant to, um, and you, you'll see why. So, why all this WebAssembly thing? If we already have JavaScript, you can write high level, uh, you can use JavaScript to write high level code, and, and you don't need to write it in, in Go or, or in C or C or C++. So basically, JavaScript was originally intended as a lightweight language to do simple stuff like validating forms. <laughs> um, but a lot has changed since then, and, and now we, uh, our web applications, sing, single page apps, uh, React, Angular, so yeah, more complicated and, and convoluted, right? Um, JavaScript has, has evolved during the years uh, to be performant, to be fast, to be reliable, and all that. But still feels that uh, with the upcoming uh, technologies, like for example, machine learning and, and, doc and video editing and stuff like that requires a lot of computing power, um, it's not enough. So the analogy here is that JavaScript will be like the hammer. Um, we all started with the hammer, and the hammer is good. It's, it's great for nailing stuff to walls, uh, but then when you require to do more complicated stuff, like building a house, uh, you need a drill. That doesn't mean that doesn't mean that you won't ever need a hammer. <laughs> so you still need the hammer for some things, right? Um, right. So in talking about speed and what are the gains that we will get by using WebAssembly. Um, allegedly, um, native code runs faster than anything else because it's like already compiled code for your machine, for your architecture. Then, it's, then we have WASM, uh, then the ASM.js, which is a subset of JavaScript, which, is, which makes uh, compilation in time easier and faster, and then the regular JavaScript. So, here realize the usefulness of was, WASM. Um, right, um, as I said already, um, a GIT compiler compiles a program as it is running, an IoT compiler compiles a program before, before it's running. So when you compile Golang code, uh, you use an IoT compiler, and when your JavaScript code runs in the browser, uh, it's, uh, there is a GIT compiler compiling the code as you go. And each of those have uh, their own advantages. So for example, in, if you use ahead of time compilation, you can make better and more expensive optimization. And it lasts long to compile a program because it's optimizing the code and, and for, for the architecture. But uh, GIT knows uh, the context where the code is running and the resources the machine has. So it can more dynamically uh, Profile how to execute, how to better execute that code to, to get the best performance. So using WASM, we could use a bit of both, and use it now. Uh, 
I don't know if you can see that very well, but um, this is, uh, these are two diagrams of how uh, JavaScript code gets executed, uh, compiled and executed in your browser. Um, so on the left, you have how uh, V8 in Chrome works, and how uh, on, the, on the right, you have how a Spider Monkey works in Firefox. So the first thing you, you have to do is to, uh, so you have the JavaScript code, and you parse it to create an abstract tree, and then you generate bytecode, which you run a bit, and then compile just a bit of that code. Uh, th this is the baseline compilation. And then run that code, and then you keep guessing what the next step is and what you need to compile. So you go back and keep compiling stuff and keep executing stuff. So this is how JavaScript works um, in, inside the browser. And with ASM.js, which we already said that it's a, a subset of JavaScript uh, that will take uh, advantage of, comp of ahead of time compilation, we could skip some steps. In this case, you could skip generating the bytecode and doing a baseline compile because you have already done the baseline compile ahead of time and you just jump directly to, to the execution. So that with ASM.js, but ASM.js still JavaScript, uh, it still needs to be parsed and it still needs to be uh, put into an abs abstract tree and, and it has a heavy just-in-time compilation. And with ASM.js, uh, the performance uh, depends on the stand, uh, the performance depends on the implementation. So each browser, Chrome or, for, or Firefox, will implement ASM.js uh, with their own optimization. But with WASM, WASM is a standard and it's an open standard. Uh, so all the browsers manage to implement it the same way. So it has the same performance for everyone. And these are a couple of um, a couple of improvements over ASM.js. So WASM has a better startup, has better CPU features, um, some toolchain improvement, and and it's uh, and everyone agrees how to optimize that code because it's an open standard. Uh, well, so in this slide you can see um, the difference. This will be uh, roughly um, a graph on the time that it takes and the different steps to execute JavaScript code, and, oops, sorry. And, and this, this will be uh, the time that it takes to execute, to execute WASM code. So um, when execute, executing JavaScript code, uh, you first have to fetch, um, and fetch, <coughs> fetching WebAssembly code uh, takes less time because it's more compact than JavaScript. JavaScript is just a text file, and WebAssembly will be a binary-like file, uh, so it's faster. Then you need to parse. You need to parse the JavaScript uh, into the abstract tree, uh, but with assembly, you don't have to parse anything. You ju just need to decode that binary, um, so it's faster. Then when it gets to compiling and optimizing, um, for WebAssembly, it takes less time because <coughs> WebAssembly has been uh, already compiled and optimized ahead of time uh, before the, the run. So it's closer to machine code than JavaScript is, and it, it's faster while optimizing. Uh, then WebAssembly doesn't need to re-optimize because everything has been compiled already, um, so you don't have to compile as you go. When executing, it's also faster because you don't ha there, there, there are many uh, tricks and gotchas that the developer needs to take into account when writing performance code. So with WebAssembly, everything has been already compiled and reduced it to the minimum amount of uh, code and instructions. And regarding garbage collection, uh, JavaScript needs to take care of that. And with web WebAssembly, it's managed manually. So it's like you need to free your pointers and stuff like that. Right, um, but what does this have to do with <coughs> Golem, really? Uh, well, I mentioned you can run your Golem code in, in the browser using this WASM thing. Um, as many of you might know already, uh, there's, a, there's a tool called GopherJS, 
which transpire Golang code to JavaScript, then we can run we can run uh, that Golang code in the browser, but it's JavaScript again with all the uh, downside of writing on on executing and compiling just in time. And now with WebAssembly, everything looks much better than ASM.js. Um, the Golan contributors have written a WebAssembly compiler for Golan code that is inside the Golan source code. Uh, and you just need to execute Go build and use WASM as a target, and it will create a WASM binary for you. And still, that WASM binary, which is a file, uh, you need to hook it into the page context so that it interfaces with JavaScript and you can call JavaScript and you can modify the DOM and you can perform actions with your web page. So now, the demo stuff. Um, so we are gonna compile a Go program in, in, into Wasm. We are gonna execute the Wasm code uh, with the Node console. Um, we are going to execute that in the browser also. We are going to add some cou a couple of functions and interfacing with JavaScript to evaluate the DOM uh, and then manipulate, manipulate it. And all the code is based on the tutorial by Elliot Forbes, which is in, in the web page, uh, which is very cool. Um, and yeah, let's get to it. So hopefully you can see that now. Right. So let's open the instructions. I need to read the instructions. No, not really. Um, so for compiling to WASM, we are going to use a, a Docker container, for, uh, the official Golang Docker container. And as you can see in this line here, we are using the architecture WASM. And we are going to compile the main dot co in Wasm. So if we go into the code, the first example, colon. So this is my main. And if I execute uh, the compilation, it's going to generate a Wasm file. There he is. <coughs> Test of Wasm. Beautiful. Um, so now we have the WASM, and we could execute the WASM. Uh, for that, we will need, uh, so let me uh, code, not code. Let me go back to the instructions. So to execute that WASM, um, yeah, we'll need to go to this. So in order to execute the WASM code uh, in, in, a, in Node, uh, we still need, as I mentioned, some hooks and a startup script. Um, this script can be found in the, in the official Go repository. And in, in uh, specifically, is this one wasm underscore exec, uh, which contains just yeah, some uh, scaffolding code to interface. Um, so we are going to download that one. Wasm exec. So now we have oh, not here. So now we have wasm exec, and I'm going to download also. Another one, which is GoGS was exec, which is also in the official repository, which is a wrapper basically to make it easier. So we're going to execute it. Go underscore GS was exec. <coughs> it requires my binary, uh, which is in Golan. My test of wasm. <coughs> Hello world. Amazing. So it works. Um, I don't know what. These weird characters are. <laughs> it seems it didn't play nice with um, the display. Um, so now we have executed this test of wasm, right? Um, let's see how how it executes in a browser. Um, so I have a make field here, 
which uh, contains some uh, target clean uh, compile, which is what we just done. Um, download, which is downloading the two scripts, and serve, which is running Caddy, which is uh, an open source uh, web browser written in Golang too. And we are going to see how it executes in the in the browser. So make clean, make. Going to compile, download the scripts, and then uh, make serve. If we go to localhost, we can see our web server. And if we go to the HTML, whoa. in the HTML, I'm going to show you what do we have. Uh, the HTML contains. So it's a simple web, it's a simple HTML file. Um, as you can see here, we are including the exec.js. Uh, then we are calling our test.wasm binary, and then we are adding a, a button, a simple button that is going to execute the function run, and the function run is going to go run on the WebAssembly object. So this is pretty simple, and we are going to see here, if I can make it bigger for you, if we click on run, console was clear, hello world. So at this moment, we are running the code we just written in Golang in the browser. Um, and this is it, really. This is the first example. Uh, it's a really simple example. Um, and now we can see um, we can see the next one. Uh, maybe we can. <coughs> so, I have three more examples, um, but we are gonna just jump to the to this one. So I'm gonna open the HTML, so you can see what the changes did we, that we did, and a code, colon, our main.go. So for this sample, our main.go, we have a channel, and we are going to register the callbacks, which is uh, the callbacks for the JavaScript calls. So basically, when we, uh, when we load the HTML and the JavaScript, we are going to uh, create a couple of functions, which will be add and subtract, subtract, and those functions are going to call the WASM code, and for that we need to we need to register these callbacks. And these are the two functions: add and subtract are going to read from from the proper uh, from the proper field in the HTML page. Are going to convert the values from a string to to a number, and are going to print the the output. So it's as simple as that. And if you if we go to the HTML. Basically, we just added two more inputs and the call to the function. <coughs> but the rest of the code is exactly the same. We are just calling go and instantiating it. Call and test of wasm. Yep, so let's see how it executes. Make clean. Make. And make so. So if we reload the page. We can see the two fields here, wasm go initialize, and then if we put four, four and click on add, <laughs> I don't know if you can see it, I don't but oh yeah. Eight, amazing. Four plus four is eight. <laughs> right. <laughs> so this is really I don't know how much time left I have. Oh five minutes. Right. Um, so this is really uh, play from current slide. Yes, it didn't. W it, did, it worked. Uh, amazing. Uh, now, forget about that. Um, right. So to 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 finish this talk, um, is WebAssembly faster than JavaScript? Well, theory and creators claim so, and obviously what we are seeing is that. It would be faster. Um, I haven't run any benchmarks, but you could see in the in, on the internet some not well-funded tests and benchmarks, and it's because WebAssembly is an MVP. Uh, there's a lot of things on the roadmap to in, on the roadmap to improve the performance, and also JavaScript VM has had uh, 20 years to uh, improve all and reach its current speed, and WebAssembly is still uh, being in active development. 
And, and yeah, there's some papers from the WebAssembly team on the expected performance gains compared to ASM.js, and you will imagine compared to plain JavaScript. Um, is WebAssembly trying to replace JavaScript? Short answer, no. WebAssembly is designed to be a complement to and not a replacement of JavaScript. As you can see, as we have already seen, um, we are interfacing with the JavaScript uh, functions, and it makes it easier because on the HTML you can hook the JavaScript functions to HTML fields, but you cannot hook WASM functions, right? So we need that interface. And the long answer is that uh, over time it's expected that WebAssembly uh, will be uh, more and more useful, and so JavaScript will still be there, but uh, it's expected that, web well, that we start writing the code in our uh, main high-level pre-compiled languages like Golang, and then execute them in the browser directly using WebAssembly. The limitations of WebAssembly, of the technology itself at the moment, are that it needs to be compiled beho beforehand. Well, that's not a limitation, that's how it is. Um, it's pretty new, it's a work in progress, so uh, it's coming along. And it doesn't support multiprocess yet. Um, but in the future, things that are coming are better compiling strategies to be more efficient, even more efficient, than some sing single instruction on multiple, da in multiple <coughs> data to make it faster also. Automatic GABA collection and what's called WASI, which is WebAssembly system interface for running WASM outside the browser. So this is uh, a, a, an effort uh, to standardize WebAssembly even outside browsers to all kind of systems. So you could, for example, compile your Golang code to run into an IoT device using WASM uh, or any, any other kind of device. When could WebAssembly be useful? Well, uh, as I already mentioned, image video editing, which requires a lot of uh, CPU games to start quickly and handle heavy assets, music, streaming and caching, VR, augmented reality, uh, etc. And when could Golang compile to WebAssembly be useful? Well, you manage to do all the things in your favorite, la favorite language, which has amazing documentation, amazing uh, libraries, flexibility, performance, and, well, you know, and you don't have to handwrite WebAssembly. So as a summary, uh, WASM stands for WebAssembly, which are binaries that get compiled to machine code before execution, uh, and also using a bit of just-in-time compilation. You can run your Golang code in the browser with Gopher.js, but uh, you really want to do using WebAssembly, which is faster. And WebAssembly aims for near native performance, it's a work in progress, um, and does not aim to replace JavaScript, and, and also it's a World Wide Web Consortium standard, uh, so it's good that all the browsers and all the vendors are trying to contribute to it. As a closing statement, uh, get out and start writing stuff for the web now with your favorite programming language, Golang, uh, and tell me how it goes. Um, thank you for the conference organizers and the uh, sponsors. And here you have a lot of resources <laughs> that you could, you could visit to, to know more about WASM, about how to compile a Golang code and execute it in the browser and all the little low-level bits. Uh, I'll be sharing the slides in my Twitter uh, and in GitHub too, and also the examples. So thank you. <laughs>